They'll attack. If I'm right, as I mentioned earlier, they're going to lose. And that's the thing to keep in mind. Today or last night is a perfect example. I mean, you know, in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, the markets can change completely. But they're losing. And it's a whole different way of gold and silver trading. Even in the, the bull market years, they never have traded like this. It's because the bums have lost control. And they're doing what they can, but they don't have the ammo to win. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance and Reluctant Preppers. We're delighted to have this returning guest that's well-respected and well-known by our viewers. He should be because he's been involved with his co-founder, Chris Powell, of the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, GATA.org, for decades. They've been bringing light and truth to what many people have not wanted them to, but now the truth is coming to light. Uh, Bill Murphy joins us this Tuesday, July 28, 2020. Bill, thanks for coming back on. Thank you for having me back, Don, again. It's great to be here. Good timing. I reached out to you because this has been a remarkable uh, week and a half or two in the silver market specifically that we've discussed at some length. And you've been coming on our show for eight years now talking about the incredible behavior of markets that have been uh, not acting natural for a long time, but suddenly we're seeing a big change. And you've been telling us a big change is coming uh, for the last couple of visits here. So can you give us your rundown of the big picture and what you see happening now in the metals markets? My pleasure. It starts with the gold cartel, as I call it, the bullion banks and the central banks and so on. It's blown up. And that began, the move in gold began the end of last May. That's when I, I started reporting that they'd blown up in the gold market that they, because of a lack of physical supply in gold. They didn't have it anymore to do what they've done. So gold's gone from 1260 to just about 2000 last night. And it's been going ongoing, and they're in the deepest of trouble. Silver they've had control of. I've been wrong on silver for years that it was going to explode. And I just sat there like digging the nuts. But they said once it gets above 21, it's all over. And sure enough, we've gone from 21 to when we got above that to 26. And it's still half price. I mean, it's, it's silver at, at 24, 25 is half of 50, which is, was in 2011 and 1980. And, and gold is, you know, at all time high. So Silver is going to go absolutely bonkers, and so is gold, and that's why we're seeing this crazy market action. In to underscore what you just said about silver uh, needing to re reclaim and surpass its previous all-time nominal high, when we had John Williams from ShadowStats.com on about two weeks ago, he talked about this nominal confusion that people have, where the headline uh, consumer price index and headline inflation rates completely understates uh, the true rate of inflation. That when you adjust for true, true dollars, true money, between now and uh, back in those previous highs, silver is even farther from its true high than, than it currently is. But you've been saying for years that you think it's going to well surpass its previous nominal high. Yeah, of course. I mean, I've been saying the same thing for years. It's going to 100. <laughs> that's probably too low, but that's where it's going. It's finally taking off, and the upside action is liable to startle people. As I mentioned earlier, the gold cartel has lost control of the gold market totally, and they're in the process of losing control of the silver market. They can't stop it. And they keep trying, but it doesn't work anymore, and it worked for a, for a long time. We have a question here about your view of what metals really should mean to people in their financial lives, because there's been a great loss of that knowledge and that understanding over the past generations, which have been brought up entirely within the fiat system. Deerfly Guy says, so many people are sitting on the false premise that purchasing physical precious metals is an investment. Please explain to these masses, many of whom are in this audience, that physical precious metals should not be considered an investment, but are actually sound insurance positions against depreciating fiat currencies and the collapsing values of other paper assets. Is it all or nothing, Bill, or is it both, in your view? Oh. It's both. <laughs> it's clearly an investment. It's clearly what your uh, person was saying there. He's right on the money. But it's it's clearly a, and also a big investment. I mean, I think, you know, who knows what gold should be right now? It probably should be three, four, five thousand. Be, because of what the gold cartel has, has done, they've kept it down in, into the, uh, uh, you know, the dungeon. And silver, as I said, is going to go nuts. And so that's big time investments. But it's also it's a safety uh, hedge against what's probably going to happen in the markets. I mean, because of this coronavirus, 
I mean, the U.S. is a nightmare. I mean, what, football? I can play football. I can't have fans. I can't have guys spitting on each other, tackling each other, rolling on each other. I mean, it's, it's terrible. I used to be a football player. I mean, I, I will miss it terribly, but I can't see how they can do this stuff. They're talking about shutting down all sorts of things, and they're going to have to, they're throwing trillions of dollars at the markets. The whole world has changed. <clears throat> Gold and silver were very bullish to begin with for the reasons, you know, that your fellow there said. And it's, it's the, the fun thing is that they're going to go berserk, and most people won't get it. We have uh, re some related questions to each other from uh, Jeff Kittleson and David Lassoff, both about manipulation and whether it is broken at this point. Is that Bill has the manipulation ended? The future trading volume is only ten percent of what it was in February because of contracts being physically delivered. Is the manipulation basically over? Over. Uh, the volume, and he's right, but the, the the volume has picked up recently, as, as of today, for example, and yesterday this week, it's picking up. They're doing what they can, but. The gold cartel can attack and like drop silver three dollars last night from the highs and gold day seventy bucks, but they can't win. That's the difference. And they're carrying out what they need to do for the government and so on, as I call the gold cartel. But every time they attack, they get beat. The uh, speculators are making a fortune for years in silver. So we all know J.P. Morgan just tortured the market since two thousand eleven, but now. The speculators have the upper hand, and they're bearing the bad guys. And that's going to continue for the rest of the year. You just touched on something about that. Last night, uh, we were all astonished because yesterday we had seen silver go up you know, a dollar in the morning, a dollar after supper, another dollar before we went to bed. And then Domo points out, I noticed all the metals, platinum, palladium, silver, and gold were all steadily going up, silver reaching $26 an ounce, and then around... Uh, 7 p.m. Pacific, all of them dropped at the same time. It was a sharp decline, and they're still below where they were. What could have caused this? Well, I'm prejudiced, of course, but, you know, the, 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 the gold cartels picking their points when to attack. And even, you know, weeks ago when I was talking to a buddy of mine, I figured, well, silver would probably go to 25 or 26 before it would correct. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. So they picked their points, and they just get their, 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 their warriors together and attack. But look what's happened today so far. I mean, who knows, because I haven't looked at it for 10 minutes. But gold <laughs> coming back, you know, was on fire again, coming way off its lows, and silver is trying to get above unchanged. And the thing's nuts. I mean, uh, the uh, gold, the futures market now has been trading five to six under the, what I call the Internet price, which is actually the London price, and it was trading $20 over that. The silver premium today is still there. It's like 20 cents uh, if the futures price over what I call the internet price, which people can see in the different websites, GoldSeek and, and KitGo and 24-hour gold, stuff like that. And the markets are just bonkers. I mean, and like trying to write a, writing a commentary. I don't even, not even bothering anymore until two or three hours into the day because what's the point? Everything I write to rip up. We have a question about, you've, you've talked about, and could you maybe touch on it here, in addition to the metals themselves, you also watch the, the mining shares. Uh, what, what are your thoughts right now about what's happening there and what you see ahead as the, as the metals do what you expect them to do? Well, great question. I mean, silver's half price to gold, and, and as of yesterday, the mining shares were half price to gold. Uh, there's, if the HUI was uh, 620 or 622 in, in 2011. When, when gold made its high. And now gold's way above its high. And just the other day, the HUI was just above 300. So they're going to go nuts, especially as the investment world pours in, because they haven't been there because of the stock market's been so strong. They said, well, I can be in Apple and you know Amazon and Tesla, and I don't need to be in stuff like this. That's all. It's, it's in a process of changing. But the gold and silver shares are going to go nuts. It's going to be a great investment. Related question from Omega Man says, if we get into a bad hyperinflationary situation such as Venezuela, will holding mining stocks be risky? I know that hard metal is always best, but mines can always be nationalized, etc. It's always a risk in anything. I mean, it can happen. But, you know, if you've got a portfolio of, of mining companies in different countries, uh, you should be okay, I would think. Uh, but, yeah, anything can happen, and that's always a risk. And... Uh, it's, you know, it's still probably come out of it fairly well, even if they take things over. 
We have a couple different questions that are related to this $21 price threshold that you have focused on for some uh, past years. Gone Bamboo says, is the famed $21 level still as valid as it was trillions and trillions ago? And there's a related question here from um, USA 40 Ounces who says, Bill, two years ago you said silver would go bonkers once over $21 an ounce. Lots have happened since then, so what now? Well, so far, so good. <laughs> Once it took out 21, it started to go bonkers. And so I feel good about that. But until it uh, really takes off from here, it really, that's not, you know, end all be all. But it is fun to see it trade bonkers like after it got above 21. So as I said earlier, I mean, the price should go to 50 and then take that out and go to 100 and we'll see what happens from there. That's a related question. This is off, off uh, the list of questions, but oftentimes we get asked, as people anticipate the increasingly apparent uh, probability that we may well be seeing new nominal highs uh, in the next year for metals, well, we already are for gold, but for silver as well. Uh, what kind of strategies do you suggest people should consider in terms of making sure that they don't uh, miss the opportunity to, to capitalize on that? You know, we've we've been told by people like Jerry Robinson and others that that trying to hold out for an ultimate top or an ultimate bottom is is a uh, sort of a pipe dream. And so do you, you recommend the perspective, not giving direct financial advice, but that people consider lightening their holdings or shifting into something else once we uh, far surpass previous nominal highs? Yeah, I mean, my, it's a good, I, good point because my weakest thing is uh, all or nothing. And I just stayed in markets way too long my whole life. So that's a faux pas on my part. So the idea for, honestly is to, Take some money off the table, maybe get all your money out and ride the rest. And and because uh, who knows what can happen? I mean, I say a hundred. I mean, maybe that's too low. Maybe it's two hundred. I don't know. But it, it at some point it, it gets to a certain point. You don't need any more money. What you want to make sure is protect what you got. And when you're thinking about protecting, when when precious metals have been the ultimate in protection, what else should people be looking to beyond that? Once those are at a, at a comparative high compared to their norm. Well, another, another good question. It depends upon what interest rates are doing, for example. Right now, you, you don't get anything, so what's the point? In some cases, it's negative. And, you know, if the stock market's had a big crash or something like that, you can start looking at great companies there. But for now, having focused on this for so long, I'm just like, we're in, we're in uh, the baby stages of the gold-silver move, so I'm just, that's my focus. All right. Now that's and we've heard multiple uh, analysts saying that we, if you compared it to a nine inning ball game, they think we're in the second or third inning here. It's still still early in the process. Certainly, last time when silver took out in in two thousand ten, its previous high of of twenty, and it ran up to fifty. Uh, it took a year to approximately to do that, so it can take a while. Yeah, but I'll be surprised if this will be much faster because of what they've done and and. Uh... It's very interesting now. I've talked to you, to you many times about the open interest was 135,000 in silver on the on the COMEX all the way up in 2011. It's now about 185,000 contracts. So the bad guys are in there. They let it go, and J.P. Morgan let it go in 2011. But the bad guys are there, uh, trying to stop it. I don't know what they're going to do. And I think they're not used to losing. I think they're going to have to panic. I mean, an absolute panic. Whether because of they, they don't have the physical ammunition to, to, to get the job done. There's a question about action on the COMEX from David Lasoff, who says, COMEX recently increased the margin requirements by $1,000 on silver future contracts. It appears that perhaps it just got more expensive to smash the price. But as I watch both the gold and silver charts that blatantly move in tandem to one another, it seems quite obvious that both markets remain manipulated. Contrarily, since the recent breakout of silver, it looks like maybe the price smash isn't as easy as it once was, especially with the bullion banks trading desks closing. Are the shorts getting squeezed, and will this continue? Will we see prices continue to rise now, or will the manipulators gather strength and find another way to suppress them? They'll attack, but there is, if I'm right, as I mentioned earlier, they're going to lose. And that's the thing to keep in mind. You know, they... they I mean, today or last night is a perfect example. I mean, you know, in, in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, the markets can change completely. But they're losing. And it's a whole different way of gold and silver trading. Even in the, the bull market years, they never have traded like this. It's because the bums have lost control. and They're doing what they can, but they don't have the ammo to win. Well, Bill, 
Uh, we've talked with you many times over the years, and I just wanted to once again say that people have been in your corner and, and just w- grateful that you're out there striving day after day, you and Chris Powell, to try to dig up what's actually going on, to keep uh, bringing this to the attention of the regulators, bringing it to the public, and increasing our awareness so that people can uh, have have our eyes open about what's actually going on. We have a, a statement of gratitude here for you from... Uh, Mike Marshall, who says, no questions for Bill. Just tell him that we love that dude, and thanks for fighting for us, gold and silver lovers. It looks like his hard work may be paying off based on today's metal prices. So it, what's ahead for you and uh, and Chris Powell and Gata uh, as you continue to see sort of the present playing out what you have been predicting for some time? Well, my buddy Chris Powell was, you know, started this Gata thing with me, you know, over 20 years ago, he just does an incredible job, and you can reach him at God at www.goddard.org. <clears throat> Get on a free list. People want to follow what I do, Lamented Pole Cafe. You can sign up for a two-week free trial. But Chris has just done a great job, and he's on the case, and you know we're trying to get involved in, with the government and legal issues. But it's 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 a it's a toxic subject for anybody. I mean, even the, the media, the press. I mean, I thank God for you, but they won't touch it with a ten-foot pole. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, big names and really sharp guys, Jim Grant, Bill Fleckenstein, they run away. If, they, if I got on the phone, they hang up. I saw he gave up on that years ago. But the point is, we're going to keep at it. And eventually, when gold and silver go nuts, it'll be like the Madoff scandal and Enron. And only until they blow up, even though people tried to blow the whistle for years, and only when they blew up is when it became a real scandal. And that's going to happen in gold and silver which is probably one of the biggest scandals in U.S. history. Well, we're grateful for your presence here with us, Bill. We've been speaking with Bill Murphy, the co-founder of the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, Gata.org. Bill, just uh, one more more opportunity for you to give uh, a word of of sage advice uh, based on your years in this to those who are new to the game, because there's a lot of new new followers here who may be actually seeing you for the first time here on this interview. So just some thoughts from your years of experience for people who are new to this game. Well, first of all, it's fun to be right for a change <laughs> on silver, for example. All the years I talked to you about silver going to the moon, and it was like, well, it, it's going to be woulda, coulda, shoulda, going to, you know, wasn't happening. Now it's happening. And so it's a delight for me to be here, and I thank you so much for taking the time to get a hold of me. And uh, I think uh, the next time we speak or do something like this, uh, people are going to be stunned at what the, the gold and silver prices have done. We'll see. Next time I speak to you, hopefully it's going to be, a, a, you know, a big deal. Yeah. Well, and it's kind of bittersweet because I'm really concerned about what it signifies about the bigger macro picture. I mean, it's like the it's like the cave canary. We 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 bet that it's going to fall off its perch, and oh yeah, it's fell off its perch. Oh dang, that means we're in a toxic environment. You know, it's like. <laughs> well, I mean, then that's very true, but there's nothing we can do about that. All that's people can do is true. Do what you can offer is to protect themselves so that they don't suffer like other people are. I mean, today's all about suffering. Everybody is with this corona stuff, and it's a nightmare. You got to do what you got to do to protect yourself. Yeah, that's what we're about to hear is uh, being helping people be aware and prepared. So a lot of the preparation steps that, that other guests have suggested people make as far as shoring up their uh, non-perishable food supply, where's your water going to come from, do you know your neighbors, uh, how to help each other out in, in your community because you may not be traveling, that kind of thing. So if Alistair McLeod may be right that we're heading for a banking crisis, that you know, Silver's meteoric recent rise may be a symptom of, of that uh, leaking into the into the uh, consciousness of those who are now getting out of the way and letting it run, but that doesn't necessarily portend that we don't have hard times ahead, so... Oh, it's going to be brutal. Absolutely. So anyway, good, good luck with all you do, and uh, thank you for getting a hold of me, and uh, uh, again, hopefully the next time we, I come on the show, it's like, you know, smiles like from here to here, you know? I hope so too, Bill. Bill, thanks again for joining us on Liberty and Finance and Reluctant Preppers. Thank you, Dunnigan. If you've decided that now is the right time for you to protect your family's financial future by acquiring physical precious metals, gold and silver, I'm delighted to let you know that I have now become a licensed dealer's representative for Miles Franklin, one of the oldest and most trusted names in bullion dealerships. And we can provide you with physical delivery to your personal possession or to professional vault storage or precious metals IRAs. Just email me at 
Liberty and Finance at protonmail.com and please include your name and phone number in your email to Liberty and Finance at protonmail.com. We'll get right back with you and find out how to best meet your needs so that you can either begin or increase your acquisition of physical precious metals now and protect your family's future starting today.